We use a peer-to-peer -peer instruction model where the research groups make a short oral presentation to their classmates and are asked to describe, demonstrate, and discuss their research experience. The map becomes visual evidence of the way the students are organizing their thoughts around a topic and reveals areas in need of exploration or further development. Concept mapping can be used with any topic and at any level of research. Its main function is to slow students down and to engage them in a thorough investigation of a subject before they begin searching the catalog, databases, and internet. It's been my experience work working with novice searchers that when given a topic, they will often type in the exact phrase or words repeatedly into the search box. By requiring the creation of a physical map of the topic as the first step in the research process, terminology, synonyms, and definitions are noted, and questions are formulated before the search for books, articles, and images begins. The map provides evidence of the group's collective thinking and is a framework that includes alternative search terms and sub-themes to investigate. In the classroom, the map acts as a visual anchor for fellow students, the librarian, and the instructor during the presentations and discussion. Both as an artist and an art librarian, I use mapping to visualize my thinking on a subject. I, help, I find it helps me see the big picture while also noting the details that made the initial idea worth investigating. Artists undertake research to find meaning and to enrich the meaning of their work. As an instructor, I am focused on the role of research in artistic activity as well as on communicating the fundamental traits that are shared by studio practice and the research process. Both begin with open-ended inquiry that involves formal